So day three here in New York, I'm at Coney Island. You guys are not going to believe this shit. Can you see how smoky it is? Check this out. This is the beach, the boardwalk, and it is just smoky. You can smell the smoke. It's like, it's like you're in the middle of an inferno. I've seen smoggy skies and everything, but I've never seen it before where you can just smell the smoke like this. It's completely insane. My plan was to hang out here today, check out everything. I don't know how long I'm going to stay here for, though, because it is like my eyes are burning. I've never seen anything. This is way more polluted and and just smoky than I've ever seen in Bangkok or anywhere in Thailand, even during the burning season. So I just walked down the boardwalk a little bit, but obviously I'm not going to spend as much time as I thought I was going to here. Plus, not to mention with the cloud of smoke, it's cold today. Like, it was supposed to be mid-70s. It feels like it's mid-60s. I'm freezing my ass off. I surely did not dress for this. This is the one place in New York I've never been before. I always, you know, obviously, I've heard of Coney Island a million times. I didn't realize it's it's a pretty big amusement park here. I mean, this place is like, uh, like Cedar Point. Probably not that big, but it, it's pretty big. A lot of roller coasters and rides. It should be pretty fun, I think, uh, to bring a family or something here. I mean, this is just neat. I wish it was nice. What a friggin' bummer. Middle of the day. Feels like it's about to be sundown. This is the middle of the day. 1.30 in the afternoon. Pizza guy from Barstool Sports has this ranked at 9.3. So, you know, I had to try it. It was right in the neighborhood. So, let's I'll check it out. Bad. I'm going to buy pizza. Right? Well, actually, the guy in the kitchen. Very crispy. Mm. Yeah, it's a good pizza. Let me try the square one. <laughs> The square is almost just like Detroit style. Super crispy body. Really good. Good pizza. 9.3? Might be. I don't know. I'm no pizza expert. So I just had that square slice and the round slice. Well, their pepperoni just came out of the oven. I'll show it to you. Check that out. So I had to try that too. Really good pizza. I mean, the sauce has just the right amount of spice and flavor. You can tell it's not just like plain tomato sauce. I mean, they really put some work into the flavor. Cheese is good. It's crispy, thin. The way I like it. Good pizza. here so looking around the cemetery one of the few names that i recognized was charlie ebbets and that's because i was a huge baseball fan i still am he was the owner of the brooklyn dodgers this is where he's laid the rest here they do have a list of about 25 historical figures that are buried here most of them i've never heard of 
One of them is the guy that invented the hot dog. However, he's on the other side of the cemetery, so we're not going to make it there. They close in like 45 minutes. A few other historical names. Charlie Evans. I just popped out of the cemetery into this like Prospect Park area neighborhood. Not sure what the name is, but pretty nice. I like it. I like it over here. It's a nice, real nice looking neighborhood. Joe's Pizzeria. So I found out the name of this neighborhood. Prospect West. You guys notice anything? Finally got me a nice American haircut. The uh, owner in there. Nice guy from Albania. 27 bucks for the haircut. That's what you're going to pay in Michigan. That's what you're going to pay in New York. Very expensive here. But he did a good job. It's definitely, definitely what I wanted to get. Much better than the haircuts I get in Thailand, unfortunately. But there I only pay three or four bucks. So get what you pay for, I guess. Day four in Brooklyn, I'm in the Crown Heights area. I just walked over here from Bushwick. It was a much farther walk than I anticipated, but just amazing, like, the different neighborhoods you walk through. I mean, some of these areas in Bushwick, just graffiti everywhere and every building, just, just a mess. And weed, weed everywhere. That's all I smell is weed. I'm gonna have to look and see if it's legal here. I don't know. Now I'm in this Crown Heights area. And uh, definitely more more kept up, that's for sure. It's pretty nice. I'm gonna look for something to eat over here. All right, for lunch today, Crown Heights. Gonna eat here, bunch of bagels. Don't know how good the bagels are gonna be, but the lox smoked salmon is supposed to be very good. So let me get in there and eat real quick. And then we'll be on our way. So let's try this bagel at Buncho Bagels. Crown Heights. Let's see here. It's much smaller than that other bagel I had, but I got locks on this one. Really good, but I might have to get two. I have to smoke salmon on the everything bagel with cream cheese, Italian cream cheese. Let's try this orange. Passion fruit. Sweet. So my name is Joseph. We're gonna do what Brian out to fill in. It's one of the six hundred thirteen that was commanded uh, by God gave the Jewish people. And um, it's all, it, it it's a mitzvah that reminds us about that God took the Jewish people out of Egypt and gave us the Torah. Be a hafta, ace, adonai, alahaka, 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 alahaka. That's Mashiach is the uh, ultimate of everything that um, we'll, we all pray for every day. That in that time there'll be only peace in the world and there'll be a third holy temple. And his job will be to teach, teach forward to the whole Jewish nation. And everybody will get along at that time. So we pray for it every day. Thank you. Yeah. And that's uh, the Mitzvah of Tefillin. There you go. Now, how often do you do this? Uh, every day. How many times? Uh, once a day. Uh, once a day you try yeah. to do it? Once a day, except for uh, Shabbat and uh, the Jewish holidays. Okay. And what, you're not a rabbi? Right? No. Okay. okay, so does everybody, why do you do this? Why don't we do this? Yeah, is do many people do this? Uh, yeah, it's a mitzvah. It's one of the mitzvahs uh, in, the, in the Torah. Right. Uh, it's okay. called tefillin. 
fulfill it. To do every day, though? Yeah, to um, do every day except for the Shabbos and the Holy Day. So do many religious people in this area do the same thing every day? Every, every day. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're the first different. person that approached me. I don't know. I've been to New York many times. I always stayed in Manhattan. I wanted something different right. to explore Brooklyn. And my dad was born in Brooklyn and moved uh, when he was wow. three. So um, Where I know I had uh, but um, I'm sure I have lots of families or something. And your mom, is she also from? No, she was from Detroit. Oh, they, wow. met, they met in Detroit. Oh, wow. So that was pretty awesome that Yosef, what a nice guy. He did the blessing. I felt bad. I didn't want to tell him like how I don't do religion, you know. Greeny's got no direction at all. But anyways, that was nice of him to bless, bless me. He did... Uh, what, what for, for him is called a mitzvah and he told me that he does one every day uh, tries to uh, do the prayer like that for a person every day and uh, that mitzvah is a good deed and so he said many people in the community here this is like a very uh, religious orthodox Jewish community Crown Heights and uh, he said many people do that once a day here he said I'll probably get approached again but nobody else approached me I don't know, he was a pretty friendly guy, but he sent me over here to this Jewish synagogue to take a look at He said it's like one of the most famous Jewish synagogues in New York. So I'm just gonna walk over here and take a look. I can see a lot of Orthodox people congregating up here. I'm probably getting pretty close. So here's the subway I'm gonna jump on to go somewhere else after this, but uh, this is the corner here. I think this is the synagogue. It said 770, 792, maybe this is it here. So you guys want to hear the craziest story? So he sent me over here to this uh, synagogue. This is one of the most religious Jewish synagogues in New York. I'll show you a quick clip from the inside. But I meet two guys. You have to wear the, the yarmulke when you go inside. So I, I meet this guy. They can't find a yarmulke. So he says, use mine. So they take me inside. And I take a little bit of video. And I'm talking to these guys. When we get to talk, I tell them I'm going to Israel, and then I go back to, to Thailand. I live in Thailand. They're like, no way, we live in Thailand. Their dad is the rabbi that runs the Shabbat. It's like a little temple thing in Bangkok. And they're the only ones. They're the only ones here, and there's hundreds and hundreds of people here. They're all studying the Bible and doing what they do, apparently. But what a small world. So they took down my number for their dad who lives in Bangkok to call me, maybe make a video at their place. I mean, just the odds of this are like one million to one. Check this out. You guys ever seen a police car that small? It's like a mini police car. I went up and asked the guy, I go like, you, you ain't chasing nobody in this thing, are you? And he's like, no, no, no chases, just for like kind of running around the community. But look at this Crown Heights community. They got their own little ambulances. They got their own security. It's pretty, pretty tight knit community. This is, I've heard of it before. I've seen other videos. Uh, I've never been here. I just want to come and walk through, maybe get a bagel, but it's very cool. Very cool. The people are so nice. I had heard that, uh, um, you know, they don't like to talk to outsiders or different things like that. And uh, not even the case. Everybody's been very, very friendly here. Mitzvah tank. Jumped in the subway and popped out in Brooklyn Heights. Not too far from the Brooklyn Bridge. I might go walk over there, see if I can get a good view of downtown Manhattan. Probably won't see quite as much graffiti in this area. I'm guessing. Looks like there's a tour going on here, huh? They have a huge dog park. Huge. Like...
Pretty amazing. So many different areas, different vibes in Brooklyn. I really like that uh, area I was in yesterday. Ah, uh, shit. I already forgot the name of it. I'm so dumb. This is pretty swanky. This would be, this would be way out of my budget. This type of area kind of reminds me of Washington, D.C. Very similar architecture, style. This is the Brooklyn Heights Promenade. Should get a pretty nice view of the city from here. Got the helicopter tour across the uh, river there, taking off. Still kind of hazy from that uh, wildfire in Canada. Yesterday was just terrible, just terrible. Today is quite a bit better. This is probably one of the best views of New York City, the financial district. Statue of Liberty, even better than I had at Battery Park the other day. Check this out. So there's the Brooklyn Bridge right there. Excellent view of the city. If you're ever looking for a great view of New York, come over here to Brooklyn. Brooklyn Heights Promenade. There's the Statue of Liberty. Let me zoom in. There she is. And the helicopter tours over there taking off. So I gotta tell you guys something. I just went back to Broadway Pizza, which is right down the street from the hotel I'm staying at in Bushwick, Brooklyn area. And I had pizza there the other day. It was pretty good, it was pretty good. But I wanted something different. So tonight I ordered uh, spaghetti bolognese. And it was like 15 bucks, which is not that much for you know this area. But I gotta tell you, this friggin' dish is like 20 pounds or something. I don't know, it's very heavy. Check this out. Look at this. Holy, I can't even tell you how much this thing weighs. This is not like just pasta with a little bit of sauce on top. This sauce is mixed all the way through. I mean, this is so much. I hope it's as good as it looks. If it is, I'm going to love those people. It's good. It's good. And it's going to be very filling. Is it the best spaghetti I ever had? No, I mean, the noodles are a little bit not al dente, but they're good. And the sauce is really good. I mean, for like a little carry-out pizza place, this is an excellent spaghetti. You can taste the Parmesan in there. Looks like some fresh parsley on top. I'm going to enjoy this, what I can eat of it. So I had a pretty good time in Detroit, in New York, stress-free. I didn't really get that irritated. I was real happy with America, sort of. You know, like I said, there were those few things I pointed out, but with my buddy Charles, we just ate at a restaurant in the airport. And again, no cash taken. So you got to scan the menu. You got to go on your phone. You got to order. And by the time you get your order done, they said, do you want to include a tip? And what's the default tip that they're trying to get you to leave? 25%. I don't even know if I'm getting good service yet. I don't even know who's giving me service yet. You know, what kind of bullshit is that? Whatever. I give her 20%. Then I'll do 25%. That's kind of crazy. I asked the lady, I said, well, can I just pay cash? No, we don't take cash here. This is like, I'm running into more and more places. They just don't take cash. This is insane. Cash is going away. We're turning it into China. It's happening. So like I said, I was irritant free, but this airport is packed here. I'm at JFK in um, New York, obviously. Heading to my next stop, Israel. Stopping there for a few days on my way back to Thailand. And uh, let me just tell you, so first I try to use the kiosks to get my boarding pass. Didn't work. I go to one side, the lady's like, oh, no, no, go to the other line. I go to that line, and they said, no, no, this line's closed. Go back there. I'm like, no, 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 she just sent me over here. I'm going to this line. And all the other people behind me said the same thing. No, they just sent us there. It's like people just are freaking idiots. So I get all taken care of. Then I get to TSA, and I had the most rude curt. And this is TSA pre. This lady was just so curt. So I'm trying to do my scan. It's not like, you have to go back and get a thing. She was just so rude and curt. And I said to her, I said, does this happen often? I don't, why isn't it scanning? I don't know. I said, don't you work here? Isn't this your station? How do you not know if this, does, if this happens all the time or not? She was a bitch. So anyways, I go to the line next to her. It was a guy, and my thing worked on that one. So this lady was just a complete asshole. You know what she reminded me of? The rude, curt, uh, like, 
uh, police in Vietnam that stand there at the at the train tracks that don't let you see her. Just, no, go away. No, go away. Like, she was a bitch. Anyway, so that's my last impression of the U.S. before I'm heading back to Thailand. You know, everything was kind of smooth. Like, I had no issues with anybody until I got here at JFK Airport and just ran into some idiots. Anyways, just wanted to vent for a minute. Enjoy the video. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you don't mind. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Off to uh, Israel for a few days.